probably the best in the league at the time, and I'm mm. delighted to say we're joined by one half of the best in the league at the moment, as here with us in the studio is Ethan Pinnock. How's it going, mate? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you guys doing? We're all good, we're Very all good. Very good, yeah. Um, well, you've been up to a bit of a quiet week, isn't it? Just a man of the match performance on the telly, you know, another clean sheet, an assist. Oh, not bad, top of the league as well. Um, seriously though, how are the lads feeling? It's been a pretty special couple of weeks, isn't it? Yeah, everyone's uh, just buzzing at the moment. You know, the, um, the highs from coming back playing and obviously winning as well. You know, we knew it would be really important to try and start quickly to put pressure on the teams around us. And yeah, the mood in the camp's really good at the moment. And what about that mentality? Because I've seen Thomas and, and Christian say, no, it's just the, the next match that's all we're looking at. I'm not having this. How do you lot do that? Because I'm here looking at every fixture, permutation, who we've got, who they've got. Are you seriously just going, yep, just the next game? <laughs> well, yeah, we try to do as much as possible because, you know, um, in reality, the only results that we can affect are our own game. So you kind of just got to uh, make sure that we take care of our business. So I think um, having full focus on the next game is is always the main thing because uh, if you're looking at other things, you, you might lose track of what what's the most important thing. And it's always the next game up. That's always the most important one. To be fair, that's what Marcus said earlier and I wasn't having it. But yeah, all right, you, you two are actually footballers. It's, it's the truth though, isn't it? <laughs> so Ethan, after, after the West Brom game, what does Thomas say? Um, he just said that, you know, he was, he was really pleased with... Um, how we played really um obviously the fulham game uh we had to grind that one out it was a late winner but you know he was pleased that we managed to take our performance levels to to that next step you know i think we were we were a bit sharper um yeah. our passing was a bit more crisp and i think defensively we were solid again i think that's a really big thing for him this year um the de desire to defend and the togetherness of the team and I think, you know, these first three games back, we've really shown it. Well, it's another clean sheet. Uh, what's been the key to that unbelievable record? Well, yeah, um, I just think as a, as a whole unit, you know, um, there's a lot of teams where um, the defenders, you know, they're happy to defend, but sometimes maybe the players ahead might not be, that might not be their first fault. But I think in the team, the team we got at Brentford, you know, everyone's first thought is when we're out of possession, uh, can we can we start an instant press, if not get behind the ball as quick as we can? Um, I think from the back as well, from David, um, me, Pontius, Henrik, Rico, we try and make sure the players in front of us are organised and obviously having Chris in there as well, you know, he, every second ball he's there and he's, you know, we kind of just try and drive each other on and I think we take great pride in not conceding goals. We've got to talk to you about your partnership with Pontus, the best in the league for me, surely. What's it like playing alongside him? Yeah, it's great, you know, um, really experienced player, um, communicates really well, um, he loves the challenge as well. And, you know, I, I just think that, you know, that, that experience helps throughout the team. You know, us having a long side, uh, a young side even, but I think, you know, the back four and the goalie, we're, we're a lot older. Well, not a lot older, but we're a bit <laughs> older than the rest of the team. So I think, um, yeah, just having us behind them helps to guide them a bit. And, yeah, you know, he's really taken to the leadership role. And, you know, he's been, he's been a good, uh, really good role model for a lot of the boys in the team. I've never met him. What's it like when you first meet someone like Pontus? Is it intense straight away? Or was it, was it scary, intimidating? No, not really. Um, I think we was out in Austria uh, for pre-season when he joined up with us. So um, it, was, it wasn't really intense or anything because, you know, in the early stages of pre-season, I think there's a lot of new faces. So everyone's kind of just getting to grips with things and meeting each other. So, yeah, it was, he's, he's, quite, um, laid, he's quite laid back when we first met him. So, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't anything too, too much. <laughs> why, why do you think the partnership works so well? Um, I'd say, you know, we, we kind of always have each other's back. So if I ever see him going up for a challenge, you know, I'm, my first thought is always to, to think the worst kind of thing and just 
get around them and cover. And it's the same for me. Um, you know, he's always communicating with me where the striker is, if there's someone running off. And yeah, I'm always making sure I'm around. So I think we just co complement each other well in the way that we communicate. And I think both sides of the games, on the ball and off the ball, um, we can, we're both like fairly decent, both sides of the ball. So I think that's how it works. And with, with the record that we've got and um, the way the two of you are playing, are you just going into games feeling unbeatable at the moment? Um, yeah, you know, we're, we're really confident going into games. We know that um, as, an, as an 11, as a squad, we're a really strong team. And, you know, if we play to the manager's instructions and play, play to our potential, that um, will be anyone in the league. Um, but, you know, there's always a case of going out and doing it. Um, and, yeah, just... Yeah. He calls you the mountain. Uh, have you got a nickname for him? <laughs> no, nah, I just skip, really. <laughs> <laughs> and, and look, mate, from a personal point of view, you've come a long way in a very short space of time, making a step up from non-league to fighting for promotion to the Premier League in, what, three years? Have you had a chance to take stock and just go, wow, look at the journey I've been on and, and how meteoric that rise has been? Um, I haven't had a lot of time really because, you know, uh, towards the end of each season, you kind of just want to have a couple of weeks to just reset and go again. And that's probably the time when you have a bit of time for reflection. But obviously, when I'm, a, uh, when I'm back at home, I'm with the little ones. So everything's still kind of 100% all the time. But, you know, I need to, yeah, maybe next time I get get a bit of a break, I have the time to just reflect on things. But yeah, you know, I'm, I'm proud of, you know, what I've achieved so far. Obviously, being in long league for a long time. But, um, you know, I've just, each time I've moved or uh, started a new season, you know, I've just tried to, to take another step forward. And yeah. And look, this might sound like a silly question. If it is, we'll edit it out. So I'm all right here. And tell me if it is a silly question. What is the big difference from non-league to championship, the centre forwards that you're facing. Um, I'd say the um, mainly the movement, um, the sharpness, and uh, maybe uh, the the thought process, uh, thought processes behind the play. So I'd say higher up the league, you know, you, you have to be more alert. You always have to be concentrating because uh, if you if you're out of position for one second, it can get exposed. And obviously, I think um, finishing-wise, you know, your mistakes get punished more the higher up you go to the league. So, yeah, I think it's just a, a case of um, being sharp in your mind a lot and, yeah, just keeping your concentration for 90-plus minutes. Like myself, you started off as a winger, didn't you? Um, who moved you to centre-half? Because I'd done the same as well. Yeah, I had a growth spurt, lost all my pace and then got, got moved back. <laughs> you lost your pace? How quick were you? If you've lost your pace, you must have been rapid. You're quick now. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be fair, yeah, I, I was. I used to be probably like one of the quickest, and like when I was a young teen. But yeah, I, I think as I grew, I kind of, I don't know what it was. Maybe not lost a bit, but maybe a bit of that sharpness. So I wasn't maybe as sharp as I used to be. So how did you react to to, to that transition from left winger to centre back? Um, what well, kind of happened in stages because I, I played um, in midfield for for a bit and at left back for a bit, so it it was kind of a step by step process. And I think uh, what actually happened was I had a pre season game whilst I was at Dulwich, and the, one of the starting centre backs got injured, so I I got moved to play centre back instead. And yeah, I, I managed to do well that game, and then since then that's literally in my position I haven't moved since then we're so grateful that that lad got injured in that pre-season game <laughs> <laughs> whoever he is I'll send him a little bottle to say thanks <laughs> um, look mate you're also a massive threat from set plays and we've something we've done really well this year obviously the assist for Brian at, at Reading it's no secret of our work with Andreas the set piece coach had you had that before at any other club um, no I hadn't um, you know usually the there'd kind of be the standard routines where you everyone would line up and then just make a run to to a certain area. But, 
you know, um, Andreas, he works really hard. Um, he's always uh, showing us different routines and ways we can switch it up to catch teams out. He's always looking for their weak spots and where where we can hurt them most. So I think, you know, um, Andreas puts a lot of work into it. And, you know, when we do train set pieces, you know, we take it seriously because a lot of the time a set piece could be the difference between win and draw and losing. So I think from that aspect, um, the boys have really taken what he's saying on and it's, it's working well at the moment. So how long would you work on them like per week? Is it ingrained into the schedule every week pretty much? Um, yeah, so, you know, a couple times a week, a few times a week, um, after the main session's done, he would, he'd pull a few players and just run some set pieces for maybe 10, 15 minutes, nothing too long, but just to get the, the rhythm in our heads so that when it comes to match day, we know the movements and kind of to get the timings a bit more, a bit more on, on spot. You could be up against your old teammate, Kiefer Moore, this weekend. Have you spoken to him? <laughs> um, I have not, not, um, not since we come back, but yeah, I spoke to him a few weeks ago and yeah, you know, he's a good lad, Kiefer, big boy as well, a couple of inches taller than me, so yeah, it should be a good battle. Didn't he used to be a centre-half and he's gone up, he's gone the other way, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. I think I, when I played with him at Forest Green, I think there was a game where he played centre-half next to me as well, so yeah. Wow. And then now you'll be marking him. So you know his game inside out, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, unless he's changed it within the last few <laughs> months, yeah. <laughs> Look, mate, it's also a year ago since you arrived at Brentford. Um, Marcus forgot your cake. Don't know what's going on sorry, there. Sorry, sorry. Um, how do you sum up the last 12 months? Um, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Um, you know, um, coming to London, being a London boy originally, um, everyone at the clubs was so welcoming when I first joined um, from day one, you know, I felt a part of the club, um, the, the coaches, the, the external staff, the cooks, everyone's just been brilliant with me and um, had a really good year. Well, look, mate, we've, uh, we've loved it and um, look, still, still got some more to go and hopefully we can top it all off and put the icing on that cake that Marcus will eventually get to you. Um, thanks for your time, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Take care, guys. Take care.